This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a closer look at the color page in DaVinci Resolve with an emphasis on its unique tools. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll showcase a variety of ways to compare and match shots. So first thing I want to do is select this clip, make sure that I'm on the standard color wheels. Take a look here. My black levels are floating right near the zero line. My highlights are right where I want. I really like the look of that clip. I think that's a really nice looking clip. So how am I going to match it? Well, clearly it's got a nice blue cast. Let's select this clip. It doesn't have blue. So I'm going to just start to, I'm going to add some blue here. I'll just dial this in and, oh, wait a minute, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe I should probably, and how about if, I, uh, well, wait, wait, what did that first clip, I'm all confused. Because what I really want to be able to do is I want to be able to see both the source clip and the clip I'm adjusting at the same time. And that opens up the gallery. The gallery is a collection of still frames that we can use for shot matching. Let me illustrate. If I select this clip to load it into the viewer, control click inside the viewer and say grab still, it creates a still frame in the gallery of this master shot. And we're going to call this master shot. Ta-da! Now, when I look at this, I'll hide the clips. And there's my master shot, and there's, well, yeah, but it'd be nice if I could sort of superimpose them. That's what this icon does right here. This creates a split screen between whatever shot you have selected in the clip window and whatever still frame you have selected in the master shot window. And if you type Option W, you can change positions. Well, now it becomes really easy to see the color differences between these two shots. I mean, they're clearly different. And for those of you taking notes, Command W, Command W toggles that split screen on and off, and Option W toggles the position of the shots inside the frame. Looking over at the, the waveform monitor, it becomes easy to see that that, well, let's see, I've got my, my gain is a little bit too high here. Because this is only a still frame, I can't adjust the settings in the still frame. So when I'm using the wheels, I'm only adjusting the shot that is selected in the clips window, this one right here. And notice, because I made a gain change, it indicated that by putting a color box around the number. Hmm. Huh. be nice if, if I could... Uh, uh, this I should probably pull, if I don't really know what I'm supposed to, what am I supposed to adjust here to get this? T well, let's switch out of the waveform and go to the parade. The parade shows us the difference between the red, the green, and the blue channels. Look at how high the blue channel is compared to the red or the green. Well, the highlights are controlled by gain, so let's just pull this up a little bit toward toward blue. That's kind of nice. And look at where our, our green levels are. Green is pretty high here. Red is not so much. So let's pull the midtones up toward green just a little bit. Uh, darn. I need more control. Another tool that's really useful is this one. This is the RGB sliders for lift, gamma, and gain by channel. I can adjust the amount of red, green, and blue in the shadows, in the midtones, and in the highlights. I can simply grab the shadows and say, I want to add a little bit of blue. I want to take out some of the green. And I want, well, the problem is, <sighs> As I move one, the others are moving. It gets really complex. So we have this wonderful tool, but everything is interactive. Wouldn't it be great if I could just control one channel and not all of them? Funny you should mention that. <laughs> Let me show you how it's done.
We're going to select this clip right here. And we'll get rid of the split screen. And we've got a really nice blue-green clip. It would be nice if I could color balance. Well, one way to color balance is to click this icon right here, which does an automatic color balance. Click it and click on something which is supposed to be white or gray. I'm going to click on the gray concrete and poof, instant color balancing. So good, I'm going to control click on it and grab still. And in the gallery, I now have a still of our color corrected shot. This is before, and this is after before and after. Well, that's not bad, but here's why this is so much cooler. I'm going to go to the color bars here. As I look at this, I've got way too much blue, not enough red. I've got an overall color cast, and everything is dark, 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 dark. Look at that. So how are we going to fix this? Well, let's think about color for a second. Dark shadows like black are equal amounts of red, green, and blue. White highlights are equal amounts of red, green, and blue. So my shadows should all be at the same level, and they're not. And my white levels should all be at the same level, and they're not. So I'm going to use these RGB color bars to fix that. As I grab the blue and drag it up or down, Notice the red and green are moving. Here's the magic of this setting right here. This stands for Luma Mix. When Luma Mix is set to 100, all of my color channel settings are interactive such that if I make a change to one, the luminance level of the clip does not change. If I set this to zero, now I can change one channel and the other channels are not affected although the luminance values will change. So I'm going to take my blue and pull it down. I'm going to take my green and pull it up. I'm going to take my red and pull it up. And I'm looking at the top of the, of the um, parade to get my white levels all roughly the same. Because why? White is equal amounts of red, green, and blue, which is just exactly what I've created here. All right, except the shadows aren't the same. So I'll go to lift, I'll pull the red up a bit, I'll pull the green up a bit, just a hair, take the blue, pull that down just a bit. Now the mids are not going to match because I've got colors in here, so you can't use the parades for adjusting generally mid-tones, because mid-tones are going to be a wide variety of colors, but you can make sure that your whites and blacks are solid white and solid black. And now let's look at this. If I compare this color grade, and we'll take a look at our waveform. Look at that. Our white levels are right at 100%. Our black levels, so I could just shift that over. Click here, pull our blacks down just a hair. There we go. That's our finished clip. If we compare that against the still frame, this is the still frame that we did with the automatic correction. It looked really good until we started to play with the individual RGB sliders and we could tweak individual channels by highlight, by midtone, and shadow, and the color correction we got on the right is far superior to the one we have on the left. Look at that. Is that amazing? This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a closer look at the color page in DaVinci Resolve. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 328. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours, on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers a variety of software, and we update it multiple times each month. For more information, visit LarryJordan.com membership. And thanks.